How fast can you complete a video game? This is the question that leads to what we know as speedrunning. And while the question is simple, the speedruns we do to find an answer are not. Speedrunning a game at a high level is never easy. Many top speedrunners spend hours fine-tuning their execution in hopes of beating a game faster and faster. Even sequences that last only a couple of seconds within a multi-hour run can take days or sometimes weeks of practice to get good at. But when all that practice is put into grinding hundreds or thousands of attempts at a speedrun, speedrunners eventually hit a limit with how fast they can complete a game. And for most of us, we like to call this limit the world record. It's always exciting to see a new world record get set because it shows us that what we once thought might be a game's limit can be pushed even further with enough time and effort. But world records are always performed in real time by humans. And of course, none of us are perfect. We all make mistakes. While all world records are impressive feats, most of them waste time in at least a few places. If we want to get an even better answer for what the fastest way we can complete a game is, we need to get rid of the mistakes. One easy way to see a time with no mistakes would be to look at what's known as our sum of best segments, or just sum of best. Speedrunners typically use a timing program called LiveSplit to time their runs. Most runners will break up their run into individual segments called splits, and Live Split will automatically keep track of what your best segment is for each split. That is, the fastest time it's ever taken you to get through that split from beginning to end. After doing a decent number of attempts at a speedrun, you can have Live Split show you what your sum of best is, which is your best segment time for every split added together for what should be a theoretically perfect runtime at your skill level. Unless the run is extremely short, your sum of best is probably significantly lower than what your best time is. Or maybe even what the world record is. So whatever the lowest sum of best for a given game is can show us an even better answer for our original question. But like with world records, there's still a limitation holding us back. The sum of best only takes into account tricks and execution that are viable for runners to attempt in their runs. If we want to get an even better answer, we'll have to include tricks that are too precise or unreliable for humans to execute. If you've watched speedruns before, you may have come across this acronym, TAS, otherwise known as Tool Assisted Speedrun. And this is where we can find the best answer to how fast can you complete a video game. Generally, the goal of tasking a game is to figure out and demonstrate the fastest speedrun possible, where one isn't limited by the potential for real-time mistakes. Anyone who's watched a task before can tell you that what they just witnessed could not have possibly been performed by a human, because it wasn't. As the name implies, a task uses tools that you would not find in a regular speedrun. I should also point out here that tasks are not meant to compete against regular speedruns. Tasses are another form of entertainment that showcase what happens when a game is truly pushed to its limit, and they are not accepted on speedrun leaderboards. With that out of the way though, let's discuss tools. The broadest tool that's used in tassing is an emulator. An emulator isn't used as one specific tool, but is rather the medium that allows all the other tools that tasses use to coexist in the same environment. This is necessary since consoles don't have the ability to make these kinds of tools possible without heavy modification. Of course, the question then is whether a playthrough performed on an emulator can be reflected on a real console. There are actually a talented set of people who make specialized hardware just for that purpose, to verify tasks on older consoles. There are even some programs that can be used to TAS on real hardware, but they're often a lot more cumbersome to set up than an emulator. At the end of the day, most emulators that have tasking capability are accurate enough to let us answer our initial question with fairly good confidence. Within an emulator, the simplest tool to use is called Frame Advance. Instead of playing the game at its normal speed, an emulator can keep the game paused and let you decide when it advances to the next frame of gameplay whenever you're ready. This way, you don't have to make all of your inputs for a task in real time, and it eliminates any mistakes that would come from mistiming button presses. The next basic tool is called Task Input. 
TAS input is a separate window that gives you the ability to perform button and control stick inputs without needing a real controller. This is nice for two reasons. First, trying to make inputs on a real controller while also using your keyboard for frame advancing is very inconvenient. And second, control stick precision. TAS input allows you to specify exactly where on the control stick you want to hold, which is good when control sticks have thousands of possible input positions that you can't physically distinguish between. With just these two tools, it's possible to make a TAS. You could theoretically play an entire game with frame advance and TAS input and probably have a TAS that looks pretty cool. When you're recording a TAS, the inputs you give the emulator are the only thing being recorded and saved in sequence to a file. When you want to recreate the inputs you saved and see the playback of a TAS, you just feed the file back to the emulator and it performs the exact recorded input sequence without any mistakes. This way, anybody with the emulator can download your input file and play back the TAS for themselves. Of course, even with using frame advance and TAS input, it's still possible to make mistakes. With only these tools, correcting even a simple mistake would require you to restart the TAS from the beginning. The remedy for fixing these mistakes quickly is a tool that most of you are probably familiar with, save states. Arguably the most powerful tool a task can use, a save state captures the exact snapshot of a game at a given frame of gameplay and saves it to a file. You can then reload a save state later and take yourself back to the exact same snapshot of the game that you had previously. For tasking, this is useful whenever you reach a point where you aren't quite sure what the optimal inputs are for a section of the run. You can make a save state before the section begins, try an attempt at what you think might be the optimal inputs, and note how many frames it took you to get through the section. If you believe there may be a slightly different input sequence that could get through the same section in fewer frames, then you can reload the save state and try again. You can try as many times as you want until you feel that your inputs have made it through the section optimally. These three tools together are the essentials when it comes to making an optimized task. There are more advanced tools available, such as memory viewers and scripting capabilities, but frame advance, task input, and save states are the basic foundation. Before using these tools, though, there's typically some work that has to be done to plan out the route a task will take. A lot of games already have speedrun routes that you can use as a starting point, so you can take the route that a regular speedrun uses and begin to see how it changes if you incorporate TAS only techniques. It could be as simple as adding a few TAS only skips that don't change the overall route, much like the TAS of The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, or it could be as crazy as the Super Mario Bros. 3 TAS, which finishes the game in 47 frames by rapidly changing controller inputs every 124 microseconds. A link to how that works is in the pinned comment. Once you've hashed out what the route should be, it's time to actually create the TAS. The process for creating a full TAS is more or less what I described back when I was explaining the use of save states. Except now, you split up the entire run into these little segments that you figure out one at a time, like solving pieces of a sequential puzzle. This is the part of tasking that usually takes the longest. Depending on how close to perfect you want to make a TAS, it could take weeks, months, or even years to fully complete. Obviously, the goal of a TAS is to create a perfect speedrun, but for a lot of games, that can be a pretty unreasonable goal to reach, especially if you're working at it alone. Sometimes, the hardest part of tasking is deciding to move on from a section, even when you know that it's possible to go faster, but not worth the effort. You know that you don't have infinite time to work on this, and it would be better to eventually finish than never finish at all. In my experience, there are also other sources of potential setback that can make it hard to stay motivated. The first comes with manipulating the game's random number generator, or RNG. RNG manipulation in a task typically comes down to retrying a specific random event over and over again with slightly varied inputs until you achieve the outcome that you want. Once you get what you're looking for, though, you can safely move on. The RNG will never be different in a task playback, since the RNG should always be seeded the same in an emulator, and the input sequence you're saving in a task will always be played back the same way. 
This guarantees that the number of RNG calls the game makes will always be consistent, and thus all RNG will be consistent throughout the duration of a TAS's input sequence. Another problem that thankfully has gotten better over time is the tendency for desyncs to occur when TASing. A desync is when the emulator doesn't properly save the input sequence that you tried to TAS, and results in the playback of the sequence being incorrect, which usually throws off the entire rest of the TAS from the point of the desync onwards. Usually, the only remedy is to retas everything from the point of the desync, and make sure that the inputs sync correctly the next time you save them. You could also try manually editing the input sequence file, but that's opening up another whole can of worms to deal with. Either way, progress was lost that you now have to get back. With all these possible complications and setbacks, you might be asking, why would anyone spend so much of their free time trying to complete a project like this? Well, to me and a lot of others, tasking is just fun and feels rewarding. Trying to figure out each little section is like solving a small piece of a very complicated puzzle. A puzzle that I personally am curious about seeing an optimized answer for. And unlike the grind of regular speedrunning, you can always see progress being made with every little step you take when creating a task. One of the coolest feelings I get during the creation process is watching back an individual section that I worked on for many hours. Seeing the playback of my efforts in real time always motivates me to keep working because I know that all the future sections will probably look just as smooth and cool. And for myself, that was enough to get me to finish a task that ended up at over two and a half hours, which I put around 400 hours of work into over a span of 22 months. And when your task is finished, you have a rewarding and entertaining showcase that probably destroys any previous notion people had of a game's limit. Tassing shows us just how much further there is to go when it comes to real-time speedrunning. The possibilities it uncovers have sometimes inspired glitch hunters to find viable ways of executing tricks that were once thought to be TAS only. And the amount of effort put into most TASs is mind-boggling. Each one is a work of art that the author put their heart and soul into, and TASs will only get better as TAS tools and methods improve over time. With the process of TASing, we might one day see a lot of video games pushed to their absolute limit, among the few that already are where the answer to how fast can you complete a video game isn't limited by the setbacks of human error, but only by the time we have and the knowledge we possess. I'm Gymnast86 with Lowest Percent, and thank you for watching.